each and every single one of us, every single one of the children of Adam, he goes through three stages. We're all going to go through three stages. The first stage is al hayat al dunya the life of this world. This is the first stage. This stage which we are going through now from the moment that we are born, we enter into this dunya until the moment that we die. This is stage number one, the life of this dunya. Then the second stage is the life of the barzakh, the life of the barzakh. And I've purposefully not translated this word barzakh. This is the second stage. And the third stage is the life which occurs when we are resurrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a portion enter Jannah and a portion they enter into the fire of Jahannam. So there are three stages that each and every single one of us is going to go through without any exception. Stage number one, the life of this world. Stage number two, the barzakh. And stage number three is when we are resurrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we take our places in the fire or in the gardens of Jannah. So when we die, when we leave this world, we move into the second stage, the stage of al-barzakh. What does al-barzakh mean? I haven't told you what, what it means. Linguistically, barzakh, it means a barrier. Barzakh means a barrier between two things. So in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that He has created one sea and it is fresh and it is uh, sweet in taste. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created another sea and that one is salty and that one is bitter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخَ And we have placed between both of those a barzakh. So linguistically in the Arabic language, barzakh means a barrier. So Allah Jalla wa Ala is telling us He's created two seas and between them He's created a barzakh. He's created a barrier. In terms of the Sharia, barzakh, it refers to that period of life which is from the moment of death to the moment that we are resurrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the moment that we die until the moment that we are resurrected by Allah Everything in between that is al-barzakh. It's the barzakh. So when each and every single one of us dies, we're going to move into the life of the, life of the barzakh. After that, we're going to be resurrected by Allah. And that's the final stage. The proof for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran about the one who when death comes to him, qala rabbir ji'un. Oh, He says, Oh Allah, send me back. So the moment of death comes to him and he says, Oh Allah, send me back that I may straighten my affairs. I want to sort my life out. I want to do righteousness. And Allah says, No, kalla. It's just a, it's just a word that he is saying. And behind them is a barrier until the day that they are resurrected. So when we die, Ikhwan, there is no returning to this life. We enter into the life of the barzakh and it is a barrier. It's a barrier between what? Us and the life of this dunya. Once you cross over, there's no coming back. You only go on to the final stage. So everything that we're going to be talking about today is the life of the barzakh. So when you hear about the trials of the grave, the punishment of the grave, the bliss of the grave, what happens when we are placed into our grave. All of this from the moment of death until the moment of resurrection, this is called the barzakh. Ikhwan, this is a extremely, an extremely important topic that we all need to prepare for. Why? Because as I've said, there's not a single one of us here or there is not a single one of the children of Adam except that we're going to go through this. We're going to go through this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَ 
everything will be destroyed except for his face subhanahu wa ta'ala all of the life if we are living then we're going to die even the atheist the one who doesn't believe in Allah he believes that there was a big bang a few things collided and now we have this wonderful creation even the atheist cannot deny that he is going to die even the atheist must believe in this moment of death and in surah ar-rahman allah jalla wa ala he says kullu man alayha fan wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram everything upon it upon this earth is going to perish and there is going to remain the face of your lord owner of majesty and honor and in elsewhere in another part of the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah ali imran every single soul is going to taste death ikhwan we're going to leave our families behind we're going to leave our possessions behind our wealth our property everything is going to be left behind except for one thing that is our good deeds and these deeds are going to accompany us in our grave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us three things, they follow the dead to his grave, two of which return and one remains with him. His family, his money and his deeds follow him. Then his family and his wealth return and his deeds, they stay with him. This is recorded by Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. We're not going to speak about today, the moment of death. We're not going to speak about what happens as we pass from the life of the dunya into the life of the barzakh. We're not going to mention that beginning bit. If you want to read upon this, then I advise you to read the hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Al-Bara ibn Azib. This is a lengthy hadith. We're going to mention parts of it today, but we're not going to mention the beginning part of it. So yeah, Ikhwan, the free slave, the freed slave of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an. He narrates that whenever Uthman, this great companion, this great companion, the third Khalifa of the Muslims, whenever he would stand over the grave, he would begin to weep. He would begin to cry. So much so that his beard would become wet. We need to stop here now. The first thing is that it wasn't just one or two tears. Rather, Uthman radiallahu an, when he would stand over the grave, his entire beard would become wet. This is how much he would cry. And he was asked, O oh Uthman, when you speak about Jannah, or you are reminded about Jannah, the paradise and the hellfire, you don't cry like this. But when you come and you see these graves and you stand over these graves, you cry so much. What's the reason behind it? Uthman radiallahu an, he replied, I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, the grave is the first stage of the hereafter. Whoever passes through it safely, what comes after that will be easier for him. But if he does not pass through it safely, what comes after that will be harder for him. So these graves, Uthman is telling the people, this grave is stage number one of the akhirah if we pass the test and this is made easy by allah what comes after is going to be easier but if this is hard and this is difficult and we fail in this then what comes after is only going to get harder and harder and harder until what until it ends up in the fire of jahannam and then he continued and he said, and I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, I have never seen anything as disturbing or more terrifying than the grave. He continued and he said, I have never seen anything more terrifying than those scenes in the grave. This is narrated by Imam Al-Tirmidhi and Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah. He said, this is an authentic hadith. I want to talk about this now. I want to spend just a couple of minutes speaking about this. Look at the attitude of the companions. He said, look at the attitude of the, I was, I was saying, look at the attitude of the companions. When we remember death, when we go to the graveyard, subhanallah, it lasts a minute. 
and our hearts are so hard our hearts are so attached to this dunya that subhanallah it doesn't have a lasting effect upon us yet Uthman radiallahu an when he would stand over the grave he would begin to weep and cry why because he knows that this is the first stage if this is easy what comes after is going to be easier if this is hard what comes after is going to be much worse we in today's uh, reminder you have two approaches either we can just look at the various ahadith pertaining to the torment and the bliss in the grave or we can have uh, a reminder we can be more general about it inshallah today I'm going to try and combine the two so I'll first I'll describe these scenes and describe what's going on in the grave and then inshallah we'll look at the various ahadith where I have bought the uh, descriptions from before we do this ya ikhwan I want you to picture yourself in a very dark place so dark that you can't even see your own hand if you put it out in front of you and then somebody comes and says there is a really venomous snake here with you and subhanallah you can't see it you don't know what it is you don't know where it is but you just know that there's a huge amount of fear this is I'm not giving you a description of the grave right now but this is a reference point that you the amount of fear that you're going to feel let's compare it to the picture of the person who is a fasik, an evil doer, he is somebody engaging in, in uh, innovations, he's a mushrik, he's committing shirk, a disbeliever, somebody who has rejected the sunnah of the Prophet or just somebody who has been decreed that he is going to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man, he is placed inside of his grave and it's dark. It's extremely dark. It's darkness upon darkness, layers of darkness. It's not that type of darkness which, you know, like uh, you turn, it's dark in your room, you turn it on, it just gets fine. But if you've ever experienced darkness which is thick, it just, the atmosphere feels thick with darkness. It's so dark, subhanAllah, you, you can just feel it. And it's a scary type of darkness. And the man, he is tight and claustrophobic in his grave. He tries to move but he's not getting anywhere. There's no space on the left or on the right. He is tight in this grave and then the grave squeezes him. When he enters into that grave and he's placed into the grave, the grave, it squeezes him. And this man begins to panic. I want you to imagine this. He's in a dark place. He doesn't know what's going on. He's got no way of escaping. His grave, it squeezes him. It squeezes him. Imagine like a mother, she sees her child after a long time and she grabs him and she squeezes him. The grave squeezes his body like that. And then subhanallah, he sees two angels that are approaching him. Two angels approach him and they are black and blue. Munkar and Nakir. They are coming to him and they have a scary appearance. He's never seen them before. He tries to make a run for it, but he's got nowhere to run. He's got nowhere to hide. All he can see are these two angels and they are approaching him. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He's unsure. He's never witnessed this. He's never seen anything like this before. He's never experienced anything like this before. And these two angels, they are very rough and tough with him. And they order him in a rough way to sit up. And they make him sit up in his grave. Imagine how vulnerable he's going to be feeling. Imagine how weak and powerless he's going to be feeling. Imagine that panic. Imagine what his heartbeat is going to be like at that moment. He's got nowhere to run. And these two angels are standing in front of him right now. Scary appearances. And then they ask him question number one. Who is your Lord? Question number one, who is your Lord? But he didn't live a life of Tawheed. He didn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. He didn't know about the names and attributes of Allah. He didn't live this life knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when those angels ask him the question, he says, ah, ah, I don't know, I don't know. So he's failed the first question. Then they ask him question number two. What is your religion? 
but he never lived the life of Islam. He never lived the life of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He turned away from Allah. He turned away from Islam. He didn't live the answer to the question in this life. So in the grave, he's not able to answer that question. He says, ah, ah, I don't know, I don't know. So he's failed the second question. Imagine what's going to be going through him at this moment. He doesn't know what's going on. All he knows is he's got these two angels in front of him and he's failed two questions. Two out of two, he's got them both wrong. The third question that they ask him now, who was this man that was sent to you? But he didn't know the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't follow his sunnah. He didn't obey him in his, on, in his commands. He didn't stay away from his prohibitions. He didn't know the sunnah of the Messenger ﷺ. Perhaps he innovated into the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So he says, ah, ah, I don't know, I don't know. And in another narration, he says, I heard the people saying something. So I just followed them. My father used to say he is the messenger of Allah. My friends used to say he is the messenger of Allah. So what did I do? I just followed them. I just, I just said what the people said. Or I wanted to get in with the Muslims. I could spy on the Muslims and report back to the people. So I just said what the people said. He says, ah, I don't know, I don't know. Then a voice calls out, or rather the angels, they reply to him and they say, may you never know and may you never say what the people said. And then a voice, it cries out, a voice calls out and it says, my slave is lying. Supply him, furnish his grave with the furnishings from the hellfire. Open a door to the hellfire for him and then the heat and the fire from Jahannam and the furnishings of Jahannam they are brought into his grave and then Ya Ikhwan the grave it squeezes him and it compresses him until his ribs they interlock they, the ribs which are on both sides of his body his rib cage it joins in it interlocks upon itself. Imagine this, Ya Ikhwan. When somebody squeezes you, somebody big and strong, he gives you a hug, he gives you a squeeze, you feel it. But imagine the grave which is going to squeeze this man until his ribs, they interlock with one another. Imagine that pain, Ya Ikhwan. Imagine that suffering. He's got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And then a man appears in his grave. A man walks towards him in his grave and he has a foul stench, ugly clothes, an ugly scary appearance. And then this man says to the person who is being punished, he says, receive the, receive the tidings of that which is going to distress you. This is the day which you were promised. And then the deceased, that dead man, he says, may Allah curse you, who are you? Who are you? He's saying to this man, who are you? May Allah curse you. Your face, it brings evil. Your face looks like you're coming with some evil news. And then the man says, he says, I am your evil deeds. He says to the dead man, I am your evil deeds. By Allah, all I knew of you was that you were slow to obey Allah and you were quick to disobey Allah. And then he says, Jazakallahu sharran. May Allah recompense you with evil.